and always will, is about moving humanity forward. And remember, folks, every act of kindness is a little love we leave behind. Hey, folks, the man with the pinky ring and the New York thing, forget about it, Bad Brad Berkwood. And you'll watch another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show on the Ringside Report web TV channel. So make sure you hit that button and subscribe, whatever corner it's in. Leave your comments below the video. I always personally respond. And as well, follow me on Twitter at BadBradRSR. Again, it's at BadBradRSR. Well, folks, before I introduce my guest, who was a regular guest on my show, I want to give you a little insight about the video that you're going to be seeing right after this introduction. 46 years ago today, the video that will play is my dad, Alvin Berkwood, taken to the streets on June 2nd, 1977, when he, along with many others, took on Anita Bryant on Miami Beach, who was attacking the gay and lesbian community at that time. How ironic that today is 46 years ago that it's Pride Month that started yesterday. Now, he did it in the era when there was no social media. He put his life on the line at a personal cost, and I saw him do it when I was a young child. And I stand in his activism shoes. He stood up for any marginalized group, whether it was African-Americans, you'll see in the video, he says Negroes, because in that era, that's what you said. He stood up for gays, he stood up for Jews, any marginalized group out there, he was fighting for them. Now, 46 years to the day today, Former President Trump and his MAGA cult are doing what? Attacking the LGBTQ community. The MAGA Republicans are attacking LGBTQ kids. They want to pass legislation that's insane. I'm not going to stand by for it. My father didn't do it in his lifetime. I'm not going to do it in mine. So one more caveat that I'll add to the video you're about to see is a piece of it you probably already saw before. If you saw the 2009 movie, Oscar winning movie, Milk with Sean Penn, who won an Oscar that year for it. They took a clip of my dad and they put in public footage that started out with Governor Jerry Brown, Ronald Reagan, my father, and then somebody that was on Anita Bryant's side attacking the gay community. So it's a very poignant video. It's the one that's pinned on my Twitter page and if you want to leave a comment about that as well, I'll always respond. Now let me introduce my guest. He is my paisan. He's been on my show many, many times over the years. We met through a negative and became a positive. Former President Donald Trump, which he told the story on his show. Now, here's the thing. We may not see eye to eye today, but I'm going to tell you something, folks, because I'm not going to let anybody attack him. He believes in country over party. He loves his country and he loves his family. And one thing that I absolutely admire about him, it's my paisan, is that he is loyal as the day is long. So without further ado, please welcome to the show, the founder of Skybridge Capital and the host of one of my favorite podcasts, Open Book. The one, the only, the Mooch, Anthony Scaramucci. Forget about it. Okay? But you're well, getting if this country control. was all Negroes and you were white, and they took your rights away from you because you were white, and they killed you, three, four, and five year old children in churches, pal, then right. what would you say, white man? Tell me. Well, that's not Where are you going to sound? The hell it isn't. You think the Negroes equal? Where do you see one in this state? Show me. They had signs, no dogs and Jews alive. Are you Jewish? Yeah. No dogs and Jews alive. I lived there when I saw the sign. Okay? You still got clubs where Anita Bryant belongs to, where they don't allow Negroes and Jews. I like to see you and Rabbi Webb and the rest of those Jews walk in the front. The day you can walk in that front door of that club, that's the day I'll join you. You're voting for the gays. I am voting for, the for Negro, Jews, gays. I belong to human beings. If you allow one, just one human being to be allowed to have his rights taken away from him as a human being, then pass.
now you don't have any right when they come to take away your rights. Because if you say screw you to them, they say screw you to you, and six million more Jews wind up in the toilet, and I'm not going to wind up with them. And I'm a Jew, and I'm goddamn proud of a Jew. And I'll say it from the rooftops I'm a Jew. A human being. All right, Anthony. Well, first of all, good evening. Welcome back to the show, brother. Hey, man. It's great to be on the show. You got a great show. You did a great job with Bill Cohen the other night. That was awesome. Enjoyed that. Thank you. Very Thank smart you. guy. Absolutely. Very and interesting. Great questions, by the way. That's what makes the show so much, so much fun. Thank you. And your guests yeah. like the show. Your listeners like the show. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Passionate man when it came to guns. He ain't playing. Got a gun problem. I want you to stand up a little bit because I love the shirt. And I, yeah, and I know you got a... I'm wearing, I'm wearing the... Yeah, I remember the comic so book. I bought that comic in 1978, probably, something like that. I'd have, I'd have to go back and see. But yeah, Neil Adams did the cover. You remember Neil Adams? Yes, I do. Yeah, so Superman Muhammad Ali. And I have the Mackay behind me here, see? Yep, yep. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I like the pants. I like your pajama pants. They're cute. Yeah, got my pajama pants. I don't know. I'm just here for you. Those are my Easter Bunny pajama pants. You know? Exactly. It's exactly. a beautiful, it's a beautiful suburban night here in Manhasset. And I got my pajama pants on. I love it. And you know, I gave you before we get into it, um, I gave you props. Loved your Barbara Eden one. And I absolutely adore. I want you to tell your mom what I said. Take some of that. All that, all that money that she got. Looking at all that money that she got over there. Give your mom her own show. She's, she's, I love her. She's great. She's, she's hilarious. Funny. I mean, I she, don't know, the last one, she's driving around in the car. I bought her. She whips a U-turn in front of her nail salon. She's eighty-six years old. The, the cop revs up the uh, motorbike, puts the siren on. She rolls down a window. She looks at him and says, "Hey, I'm been living in this town for eighty-six years. Are you going to be the first cop to give me a ticket?" Did you, Anthony? Did you buy your mama Maserati? I did, yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you. Let me tell you something. You know, because we've talked about this, okay? I love cars. You remember, I when I was a kid, we had, the money was tight. I'm not saying we were poor. I would never right. say that to anybody, as you know. My dad was a middle-class guy. He worked on the crane, got a good hourly pay. Uh, I would never dishonor my dad by telling anybody I grew up poor. Did not grow up poor. But we had to work. And, you know, yeah. we had a budget. And, you know, we were hustling. You know, I had a paper out at age 11. I was working at my uncle's motorcycle shop. I Worked at the local supermarket, and I hustled. And I bought my first car when I was 17 years old. Camaro. Yes, it was. It was a 1979 Burgundy, like Ron Burgundy, Burgundy Camaro. It had cigarette burn marks in the ah. vinyl upholstery, okay? And I didn't care. It had 37,000 miles on it. And my uncle told me that's got too much mileage. This guy ran this thing into the wall. I, I didn't care. It was like right. $3,500 something like that. And that was my first car. And I waxed that car. I armor rolled that car. I put a power booster, Pioneer stereo system in that car. Remember them days? Track. You know, I thought I was the man driving up and down Meadowbrook Parkway. On my <laughs> Park. Oh, my God. You take me. Did you buy a Quattro portrait? What did you buy or the other one, the smaller one, or the no, big one? The small one. I had to buy her a small one. She can't. She can't. She can't move the quadruple part. There's a smaller one. I yeah, don't that, that's what I had. I had the model. I, I got. Her, I got her. I got her a smaller one. But she's, you know. And by the way, she's a nut. She's listening to. She's listening to country music. My 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 mom is an Andrea Bocelli <laughs> or country music fan. So if you go in there, there's like four channels. <laughs> it's those four channels. And then she's like, I, if you if you switch the toggle and you put it on sport, it really makes it the, the right noise. Yeah, exactly. That's, what, that's how I grew up. You know, you know my, my mother, come on. I love, my mother, I love it. My, my man, what are you going to do with the money, right? You know, give some of it away to charity and try to help my family with it. And I'm saving some of it for my kids. That's it. And there's nothing to matter with that. All right, we're going to do some talking points tonight. We're going to probably not see it eye, eye to eye, but that's okay. That's why we love each other. Yeah, you know that. Well, that's why we're gonna, it's fun to be on your show. We can have a respectful, honest, crystal clear conversation, and then people can evaluate it. They don't have to always agree with me. I, I, exactly, I, I, and neither I me either. Point of view. I respect your point of view. I think you're a very smart guy. And by the way, I think America could return to a consensus 
where I give a little to you, you give a little to me, and we get the job done as opposed to what's going on now. It's nonsensical. I agree. All right. I'm going to throw out a talking point, read something, then we're going to ask you something on the other side. First talking point is going to be woke. Now, I'm reading this for the viewers. I know you know what the definition is, but I'm still reading it. Woke is now defined as aware of and actively attentive to important facts and issues, especially issues of racial and social justice. I hear you, you know, you're doing a lot of TV now. So I hear you talking about woke on TV mm -hmm. since you've been doing a lot of it. Yeah. And I know there's things about woke. We'll get into it in a minute after I read this. Well, that, that's one person's definition of woke, we're obviously. Okay, and that, right, that's right. actually that definition. If that's what woke is, actually. That's that's, that's my definition. That's my that's definition. definition. Then you know what? I'm good with all that. I'm right. a, I'm an open-minded guy. I am a colorblind guy. Well, and that's what I'm getting ready to say. I'm, I'm a, getting ready I'm to say you, you are a orientation woke. blind guy. I mean, uh, but what I don't woke. like, I don't need it shoved in my face though. See, but, I think that's where the mistake right. is. But you, but you're woke, and I'm going to say why you're are woke. you. You are you? Did you choose your sexuality? What do you mean? I choose my sexuality. I don't know. When you woke up, when you were 13, and you got your, you know, your your pubic hair, right? And you decided that you either liked men or women. What did you choose that, or that was something that you sort of were born with? Were you born that way, or you chose your sexuality? I think you were born that way. Okay, so I do too. Now I'm not saying that that's correct or not, but I ask gay, straight, trans people. Uh, cisgender, all different types of people. Are you born that way or not? Most people, I, I don't know anybody that actually said to me that they weren't born that way. So I was born heterosexual. Right. That doesn't make me better than somebody that was born homosexual with their sexual orientation. But here's the thing. I do not put my sexuality in people's faces. I don't stand on a court, make, you know, uh, on TV, make out with my wife or shove my sexuality down the throat of other people. I think that is a huge mistake. And I think that is causing an unnecessary amount of friction. And it's giving space for Ron DeSantis and it's giving space for Donald Trump to ignite a culture war that the country shouldn't be having. That's my honest opinion. So, so, so my opinion, just 30 more seconds is live and let live, but we should be, you know, allowed to not have it in each other's face. That's my honest opinion. Because when you put it in each other's faces, people go crazy on each other. And I think it's totally unnecessary. And my last point on this is that we live in a society that accepts it, that should accept everybody, Brad. And, you know, I tell my anti-woke friends who are nuts, who cares if someone's doing something that you don't like? Who cares? It's not affecting your life. Right, but you have people, but you have people legislating it yeah, that it is affected. What DeSantis is doing in Florida is, is above and beyond. Terrible. Terrible. It's above it's above so and I beyond. I debated you're, his PAC guy. Banning, banning books. You you the, the thing is, if you, you know, if if you terrible. have a child that comes home and says they're if they're looking at themselves if they're a boy and they think they're going to be a girl, vice versa, whatever it is, they, they're, the way that they're acting, Marjorie Taylor Greene, they're getting people killed, Anthony, with this shit. They're getting them, they're getting people killed. Well, I, well, and and so I'm, so I'm going to tell you something. We so made I think that that's pride. terrible. I speak out against that all the time. I debated right. uh, Cuccinelli, who runs the Santos' pack. I mean, the guy almost embarrassed them. Everything you're saying, I agree with, and I could debate Ron DeSantis. I could debate Cuccinelli, any of his thought leaders that are on his campaign, how he's handling that and the immaturity of the way he's handling that. And the he's a hypocrite because he, he, he accuses the woke people of virtue signaling to each other, but he's virtue signaling to his right base you know by he doing is. the stupid things that he's but doing. You know it. But the thing is, we were making strides before Trump came along and until the MAGA Republicans went fucking nuts with it. We yeah. were making strides. In this. And, yeah. and here's the reality. I agree like with you everything said, you Like said. you said, I, I always say this. You don't have to accept if, if, if you're truly religious, you say, I'm, you know, a marriage, a man, marriage between a man and a woman. That's your right in this country. But what's not your right, and this is what I really push back on. It's not your right. And I think we'll agree on this is to treat anybody less than. If they're gay, 100%. if they're straight, if they're black, if they're white. And that's what we, and, and in this country, we have a tendency to do this. And I think a lot of this stuff would woke because everything, we, 
any almost everything in this country, the way we do things, we always have a tendency to go too far with something. We really do. But we also have a tendency in this country not to reckon with issues that we have. My dad was fighting against Anita Bryant in the seventies when she was taken on the gay, com- gay and lesbian community. Then we they, they passed the gay marriage. Now they want to try to reverse gay marriage. I mean, it was passed. Leave it if you don't if you don't accept gay marriage and don't marry someone of the same gender. I mean, that's really how simple it is. And I, and and the thing with like with drag shows, they're saying uh, you you they're, they're pushing your drag show. Don't go to the drag show. And if if you don't want your kid to see it, then don't take your kid to the drag show. I mean, I don't I don't understand it. And and like you said, we're fighting cultural wars. When we have so many other we things that we could do, we, we we don't we don't disagree with any of that, you and me. Okay, but what I'm saying to you is, if Anheuser Busch wants to bring Dylan McInerney or whatever his name is, and they want to promote transvestitism or cross dressing or whatever they're doing, then the consumer, it's a free market. The consumer say, you know what, that brand no longer represents me or what I want. And they don't have to be called racist for that or have to be called homophobic for that or anti-transgender and say, hey, look, that's just not for me. And if you want to do that and you want to promote that, you got this guy walking around on the North Face ads and he's in drag with the beard and the long nails. Okay, if that's your market and you're selling into that market and there's a group of people where that's not their market and so therefore they no longer want to buy your product. That's the free market. And, and I, no, I, and, and I agree. That. That's my point. I don't need and to hear. I agree with that. Point. Even Barack Obama's 86 year old mother-in-law. It's like, you know, the scolding is a little bit too much now, guys. OK, so you don't have to agree with me. I, you know, you want to drink light, bite, but light. That's great. I want to drink a different beer. That's great. We don't have to have this scolding. Oh, I'm a racist or hate. Uh, people of different sexual right, but but Anthony, and, and but to counter that, stupid, stupid. right? No, but, stupid. I, but I agree with, with what you're saying in theory. If you don't like it, then don't do it. Don't don't mm-hmm. go drink uh, 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 Anheuser or uh, whatever it is. I don't even. I don't drink beer. I hate beer. But you got people, the crazies on the right, Ted Nugent, and all these people out there. Uh, not Ted Nugent, the other freaking freak. What's his name? Kid Rock. Shooting, shooting up the bottles, and it, I mean that's ridiculous. Don't buy the stuff. But I mean, come on. Now they're attacking Chick Fil A because Chick Fil A, which was very, very conservative, they didn't like gays. They had a very strict policy, very religious. Now they're kind of going a little woke. Now they, now they want to cancel Chick Fil A. It's like, what are we going to cancel this week? And I'm not saying the left gets it right all the time either, because they don't. I like I just said, there's, there's too much extremes on both sides. But going out and making TikTok videos, shooting the bottles and, and and or going in Target because they have LGBT clothes and tearing them up. Come on, that's insanity. That's insanity. I am totally and completely with you on everything that you just said. I think it's nuts. But um but what where 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 I think we would probably also agree is that's the free market. So whatever happens in the free market happens. I don't want proto-fascists. I don't want the government getting involved and in legislating what we can or cannot say about gay people. I don't want the government getting involved because they don't like Disney's exercise of its free speech uh, rights in the country to then legislate stuff against Disney. You know, that guy Cuccinelli that I debated on CNBC that night, I mean, it just destroyed the guy because... So you're telling me you're a Republican and you're for the free enterprise system. And we had a Jack Kemp enterprise zone set up in the mid sixties in Florida, which enticed Walt Disney to come to Florida. And that's all the Republicans have ever talked about for the last 50 years is creating these free enterprise zones. And so he goes down there, creates it. And as a result of the free enterprise system, he puts billions upon billions of dollars into the state of Florida He's the largest employer, billions of dollars of tax revenues remitting back to the state of Florida. And because he's exercising or the corporation is exercising his right to free speech, you are going to legislate now against him or against that company. That is wrong. That is proto-fascism. That is an invasion. If the left did that, I would go crazy. And if the right did that, it would be like, let's say there was somebody that said, okay, listen, I'm a transgender governor. 
and you live in my state and you have to just all day and all night promote transgenderism. And the, the company said, geez, I don't want to do that. Uh, and then so they legislated uh, things against the corporation. The far right would go crazy. Right. Right? It would go crazy. So, so I'm telling you that we're nuts. We lost the plot in the country. We're nuts. We got to cut it out. You know, we got to look at the common sense thing. The common sense thing is leave Disney alone. They're very valuable to your state. You're not really winning that many points in the culture war on Fox News. Leave those immigrants alone. Don't ship them to Martha's Vineyard. I'm they're, glad you said it. You brought that up. I'm glad you speak that. They're human beings. They're yes, human they are. Beings. That could yes, have been my are. mother. Could have been my grandmother. They're mine, mine too. Don't do that, okay, because that's inhumane, and you're scoring political points using a real person, and you're affecting the trajectory of that person's life. Okay, but you know, you got bitter, hard right people. I go on certain television shows and they go crazy over this. So, oh, well, Joe Biden sent the person here. And those blah, blah. Hey, it doesn't matter. Two wrongs don't make a right. It just doesn't, it's not right to do that. Okay, and it's very bad for the culture. You know what I'm saying? You right. with me? I'm with you. Next talking point your former boss, Donald Trump. So I want to go over some stats for some people just to remind them. You know all this, Anthony, but it's for the viewers. So in the 2020 election, Joe Biden had 81,282,916 votes, which is 51.3%. Trump had 74,223,369 votes, 46.9. As you know, Anthony, Biden also won Electoral College, 306 to 232, which was the same win that Trump had over Hillary. On a show you and I did back on November 17, 2020, you talked about that 74.2 million that voted for Trump, which was an increase over the 62 million 984,000. Big turnout. Big turnout. 828 in 2016. So you had 11 million 238,541 voted for more a second time. I'm quoting you. You said, we have to give them an off ramp. Now, this is November 17, 2020. Well, it's now a little over two years and six months since we did that show. Trump has more cases than Denzel Washington wanted to put on gang members in training day. What do you offer Trump supporters now, even after an insurrection he caused, he continues to lie about a rigged election, and I'm going there, and every fucking thing he's done to tear down institutions and shit on democracy like we have never seen from a former president, Republican or Democrat in our lifetimes and probably ever in history. What do you do with these people that after everything, even today, the Memorial Day thing I text you, I lost my fucking mind, how he talked about like his guys are, are, are compared to your to your family members that fought in World War II or somebody that died. It's It's beyond, it's beyond. What do we do with these people? Well, well, okay. So, I mean, but here's the problem. So, you know, they're they're conjoined, right? So Trump becomes powerful because of the there's a large group of people that think a certain way. He reflects them. He's the avatar of their anger. He is their representative. So, so there's a couple of things you you have to do. You have to smash Trumpism. And you have to smash the fever. Now, everyone's going to be really upset with me now, but I'm going there. I'm going to compare it to the Nazis. I'm going to compare it to Nazi Germany. You know, you had in April of 1945, 60 million people dead, the entire country of Germany completely decimated. Okay, you had a 45, 50% approval rating for Adolf Hitler. April of 1945, where he was ready to blow his head off. Okay, and so... What happens sometimes is people get sucked in. They get sucked into a movement. They get sucked into scapegoatism. Now, we are very blessed in this country. And I'm going to recommend a book to all your viewers and listeners. Uh, it's by Lynn Olson. It's called Those Angry Days. Because in the 1930s, we had an America first movement. We had a rise of fascism, the specter of fascism. It was led by Father Coughlin. It was led by Charles Lindbergh, the famous aviator. Mm -hmm. But we were very blessed in the 1930s. We had Franklin Roosevelt. 
who was this very charismatic, very wise, tons of political acumen, and wanted to preserve the system of the democracy. Okay, Franklin Roosevelt, if he was a different person, if he had a different temperament, he could have guided the country towards fascism, mm -hmm. and he could have possessed dictatorial control over the country because we were weakened by the Depression. There was a war going on. OK, and some people accused him of being a little bit too aggressive with his executive powers, but he never went over the line. And and my point is. We did not get the fever that the Germans got or, frankly, the Italians got or even with Hirohito in Japan. And so, yes, you do have a very large group of people in this country that have been sucked into Trumpism and they will equivocate for Donald Trump no matter what. Shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue. No problem. Get indicted. No problem. Rape a person. No problem. Uh, insurrect the government. OK, that's no problem. OK, but the good news is it's a smaller group than it was in 2016 and it's a smaller group than it was in 2020. But the only way you're going to end that is through unconditional surrender. You're going to have to beat his brain in in 2024. OK, again, metaphorically, because, you know, I can't say that physically, but metaphorically. And my point is. I'm going to do everything I can to do that, right? So I will support candidates that they can hurt Trump. If Donald Trump is the nominee, I will do everything I can to work for you know, the, uh, President Biden. Okay. I think they're making a mistake, though, okay? You know, if, if I were them, they will never do this, of course, but if I were them, uh, they got to swap out Kamala Harris. So you can like that. Hold on to that. Point. You can like her, but she I'm doesn't talk about that. Jobs. She's not helping the ticket. And, and you have to not virtue signal. If you want to be successful in life, you have to look at the merits of the situation and not do the virtue signaling thing that we're all doing to each other and go with somebody that the independents and the sort of moderate Republicans could look at and say, OK, Joe Biden's doing a good job. Brett. If Joe Biden, something should happen to him at age 82 on his way to 86 in his second term of the presidency, who's going to be in the job? OK, now she might be the, a very nice person. I don't know, but she's not doing the job. She's not. She's the John Nance Gardner. That was Roosevelt's first vice president, and he got rid of him immediately. Okay, he went through three vice presidents, as you know. Well, oh, I know. We're going to talk to that. that. We have to start firing people that are just not doing the job. You okay. know, oh, I can't fire. She's a black woman. She's the first black woman vice president. And we can't do that. So, OK, you're going to lose a very big piece of the independent voters. Right. And I'm going to get to I'm going to get to that talking point because I have that. As it has one nothing to do with her color. I know that. I know. Anthony, but, but I'm going to tell you something. I hate when you say you don't like virtual signaling because we talked offline, but I'm going to I'm going to put it out there. So. We might look at virtual signaling differently. I asked you about Skybridge, which I already know the answer to it because I know a lot of your employees. I, I've dealt with them. I've seen them. You have a lot of diversity there, which is a good thing. And I actually think it's something that you should stand on because a lot of people on your side, I'm not saying you're mad Republican, but a Republican, they don't want diversity. Trump didn't have diversity in his cabin. He had Ben Carson. He put him over a HUD. And I, I'm not saying 100 percent. I could say he did it because he was black. But Ben Carson should, had no qualifications to be over HUD. I think it was an insult. But he had no, no it's, diversity. It's happened, on it's happened. It's Listen, it's happened on both sides. Oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. But- the virtual signaling thing, companies should be more like your company. You have a hell of a lot of diversity. Whether you want to say it or not, I'm going to say it for you. That's a positive thing. I think that's a good thing. But the reason why I don't want to say it is because I'm not hiring people because they're black. I know that. Or they're I know lesbians, that too. Or they're homosexuals. Or You're they're hiring the most qualified right? people. I'm hiring them because they're really good at what they do. Right. And I respect them. But here's the other thing. People get very mad at me when I say this. I don't treat anybody differently. And you're a woman in the office, and I don't like what you're doing. I get in your grill. I say, I'm sorry. I don't like what you're doing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't walk on eggshells in my office. If someone wants to bring a lawsuit against me because I'm telling them that I don't like what they do, bring it. Right. Okay. You know, I, you know, you know who the personnel director is at Skybridge the last 18 years? That would be me. And you know what? I have a paper shredder right by the file. Give me the fucking complaint. We're going to put it in a paper shredder. Shut the fuck up and go back to work. Okay? <laughs> and if it's a real complaint, then I'll then I will then I will get out there and smash somebody's head. And I have fired people, okay, without getting into the details right. that are inappropriate. 
or that have said something that I don't like, or frankly had made a racist comment or had made a comment or said something to offend somebody that I didn't like. Right. Okay. But look, it's my company, it's a small little company. Those are the decisions I get to make. And if someone wants to challenge me or sue me, go ahead. But I'll tell you what, I'm in the business at Skybridge for 18 years now, and no one has ever done that. And the reason I don't do that is because I treat people fairly, Brad. Anthony, okay, I've always way, said that thing, about you. But let me tell you this. I Go don't ahead. treat them equally. I treat people fairly. So if Brad's coming in, he's working a 90-hour work week, and John Doe's coming in and working a 20-hour work week, they're not getting paid equally. They're right. Fairly. That's understandable. Okay, yeah. Right. You know, the, 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 we're going to be nice to them. doesn't matter what their sexual preferences right. are, orientation, whatever it might but, be. But not everybody not does that. that. Not everybody does that, Anthony. And, and when we first met, it's one of the biggest things that I told you. I used to, I told you, I first saw you on Bill Maher. I didn't know who you were. And the one thing that when you didn't like something with Trump, and I told people this, people forget they have short-term fucking memories. The truth is this. You would say, I didn't like this. No, we know you made That's a mistake. You own it. All right. But if he didn't do something fired. right, you didn't like it. You got to go 13 for 10 for Donald Trump. Exactly. If you go seven for eight for Donald Trump, you're in a fight with him. Right. And okay. 13 for 10. This girl, Kaylee McInerney. Okay. <laughs> Don't even get me started on her. Well, I mean, Kaylee McInerney, in terms of the level of ob obsequiousness, you could not be any more further up the poop shoot of Donald Trump. Well, uh, your friend too. Your friend thing, too. She said one thing he didn't like, and he's torching her now. Right. Uh, and and welcome to the Trump show because that's what he does. He right. Well, look, anybody you, your your buddy did the same thing, but she but she's the one person I don't hear nothing about no more. Is Hope Hicks? I think did Hope Hicks go like to another planet? Because you hear nothing about Hope. She must stay under the radar. Yeah, I she like was hope. she was a I like, she was I like a single hope. fan. I, I I like Hope. You know, I, I know mean, you do. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. You know, we all made mistakes, and some of us have been brave enough and honest enough to say, hey. I made a mistake. I apologize. Trump did something to the society that I participated in, which I regret. And he you've made, always said that. He made the society coarser. He racially charged things. Uh, he hurt people and made them feel unsafe about living in an America that we all love. I'm sorry that I contributed to that. Okay, but there's nothing more I can do. I made a mistake. I can't go back and rewrite history. But at least I had the balls, Brad, exactly. to go after the guy in 2020. Exactly. And we're, I mean, we're going to talk about that, too. But here's, here's the thing, Anthony. I can't. Now, somebody may come on this video and leave a comment and say, Brad, he did this. He did that. I never saw you lie from a lot of these people, Anthony. Right. You know this. Even people you like. I'm not going to throw out names. I'm not going to take shots at, at people we talked offline that's going to stay there. But there's people that are live from still to this day, to this day. And even if you, I mean, that's above and beyond. I mean, I don't I don't want you to live for Biden. Th no, that whole I never lied for him. You know, the other thing is I said from the press conference right. day that he threw the ball through the tire. And people said, oh, look at this guy. He's lying that he threw the ball through the tire. Then I had to go get the YouTube right. video of him throwing the ball through, through the tire. tire. I didn't lie. I said, right. the guy, hey, you don't want to have to like Donald Trump, but he is a gamer. Okay. He can hit the shot in a clutch situation. Okay. Now he may not be on your team and you may not like him. Barack Obama can hit the shot. Okay. When Barack Obama was going through the debates with Hillary Clinton, his team is knocking on the door at the hotel room. Are you ready? You're ready. You're ready. Barack Obama, I got this. He got the ball, hits the shot. Like or dislike Donald Trump, Donald Trump can hit the shot. That was the point that I was making. Okay. Certain people, they're gun waivers. You know what a gun waiver is? You're at the OK Corral, you're yeah. at the shootout, yep. and the guns move in. Yep. The person can't hit the shot. They get nervous and they start shooting the bullets everywhere. Okay. Now, oh, he said something nice about Donald Trump. He's a terrible human being. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't care. I'm trying to evaluate it objectively. Anthony, okay? look. He's a dangerous. He could be president again, Brad. I know that. We're going to do everything we can to stop him. Right. But you you would be naive to think, and this is why I don't understand the Democrats. You know, you know what the best thing the Republicans have going for them? Or the Democrats. <laughs> the best thing the Republicans have got going for them, the Democrats. Yeah, but you know what? The truth, but here's the thing. Off of what you just said, then we'll go to the next talking point. You know I despise Trump. I hate his guts. Hate him for everything he's done in this country. But someone asked me, 
Did he do anything good? I said, well, if you want to be honest, he got up. Now, he's an idiot that he can't speak to it. His people couldn't keep him on, on target. He got up Operation Warp Speed. He did. It was under his administration. He got the vaccine up quick. But he doesn't. He can't focus to talk on that because everybody on a lot of his nut jobs didn't want the vaccine. You know, you remember this right after the White House. He spoke one time and said, get vaccinated. They booed him. He never said it again. He just had a rally, I think, in Iowa or somewhere yesterday or day before. And they, they yelled out about, you're the reason why we got the, you know, the whole vaccination thing. And, of course, he pivoted instead of standing on saying, well, it was a, it was a good thing. He got vaccinated. Him, Melania, and the kid got vaccinated before they left the White House. All right. Let's, but let's you finish. know what? The vaccines, they hurt some people, too, though. Honestly, you know, these... These, I took the vaccine. You took the vaccine. Right. But that's another thing we did. You know, there was a lot of people that said, hey, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this vaccine. It wasn't tested enough. And they didn't do enough data on it. And they were jamming it down people's throats. And I think we have to have an honest assessment of that as well. I took the vaccine. I made my staff take the vaccine. But I don't know about these vaccines. I'm just being very honest with you. They don't seem like they work. I took five vaccines, Brett. I've had COVID three times. And I'm experiencing long COVID. So so I'm not. Uh, yeah, but didn't they also you know. say, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying I'm, yeah. I'm 100% is that if you didn't get vaccinated, like in early stages in New York, people were dropping dead from it? Yeah, that's that, why that, I got that vaccinated. That the vaccinations help that's you stay why, alive? That's why I got vaccinated. But you could, we're going to know in three to five years whether there are autoimmune triggers that have taken place from these vaccines. Okay, here, let me, ask you one, let me ask you something off that. Brad, here's the pro bad part about what's going on, okay, because we're so polarized, okay? You know, back in the 60s, you had people, you didn't have big pharma back in the 60s. We're like, okay, how am I going to make money off of all this? You had like Jonas Salk was like, okay, I got to try I try to solve this polio situation for the American people. You know, so you, you, you went from idealism to massive establishment cynicism. You got a lot of people in the country that you have to have, you have to figure out how to restore trust. You know, you talk about the 74 million people, those people, they don't trust the establishment. They don't trust the medical establishment. They don't trust the business establishment. They fucking don't trust Wall Street. That's for sure. And they definitely don't trust the media. So, you know, I'm just saying to you, we, you know, I understand you your point. To fix I, that. I, fix that. I, I, I understand your point. But like that. But the problem with the, with the smarter, more clever Trump, you know, the good news about Trump, he never got 50 percent of the vote ever. No, he didn't. He but but old above 50 percent. But you could get a small. I mean, DeSantis is like, you know, a drip. I mean, let's just be honest. Right. The he guy is, is he's like, pathetic. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, he has he has. Let me show you something here. Like this is like. Uh, this is the uh, microphone sanitizer that I use. I sprayed on there. This, he's as boring as this bottle here. See? Oh, I know that. The bottle actually has a cartoon on it. So he's the, the bottle is actually more exciting than Ron DeSantis. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but to your point, to your point, though, and then we'll move on to the next one. The problem that I have, I, I don't have a problem with what you said about the vaccine. I know some people on the, on the left that are questioning things, too. However, however, I do have a problem when people listen to Trump that the FBI is this, and this one is this, and this yeah. one is that, and the election was rigged because Donald right. Trump, because that bullshit with the election, which we're going to talk about, is all Donald Trump. That was oh, his terrible. thing. That was I agree that was that. all his shtick. Terrible. And to this very day, he's still running with it, and it's destroying our country. He's, he's divided our country more than it's ever been, and he still does it because 100%. when have you ever seen an ex president, Republican or Democrat, he won't, he can't go to shit. The living presidents, Clinton, Bush, and Obama, he'll never be invited on that. He probably won't go, but <clears throat> not going to the inauguration. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you have to go, but it's a norm and it was embarrassing for the country. Let's move on. Let's move on. Talking I point, MAGA Republicans. You said I agree with you. Right. MAGA Republicans want to read something. On February 17, 2021, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeted out this about Republicans who really today are MAGA Republicans. She said, and I quote, Republicans could trip over their own shoelaces and they'd still find a way to blame me, immigrants, LGBTQ plus people, the Green New Deal, BLM, anything, but accept responsibility for their own actions and dealings. Ineptitude, bigotry, and corruption disasters in their own right. Now, 
You know why I'm reading that to you? You retweeted it. And you said, AOC retweeted, and you said, she has a point. We have become the party of juveniles and short-term thinking. So off of that talking point, I want to ask you this question, Anthony. Mm -hmm. Tell me what in the Republican Party in the subsequent two years and few weeks since you said that about agreeing with her in your party that has changed? Nothing. Nothing. It's a, it's disgusting and it's uh, very painful. And so you have to sit there and you have to say, well, what's best for the country? Again, these are my opinions. What's best for the country is a two party system. And I agree. One party systems don't work. Take a look at what's going on in California. Take a look at what's going on in San Francisco. Take a look at these inner cities. They just don't work one party systems. And so we need a healthy two party system. We have a di very, very diseased Republican Party. We have a slightly diseased Democratic Party. We have a very diseased Republican Party. Uh, I would encourage all of your viewers and listeners to read the Peggy Noonan piece, which is in the Wall Street Journal weekend edition, which is coming up this weekend, about the Republican Party. And she plaintively says in the piece, a Donald Trump nomination. In 2024, the Republican Party presidential nomination would probably be a mortal blow to that party. The party will probably be finished after that because I'm hoping for a more rational, more normal nominee. OK, I don't want it to be DeSantis. I know a lot of your viewers and listeners probably don't like Christie, but he's way more moderate than both of those guys. And he's a tougher guy than DeSantis and he can bring the heat to Donald Trump. Um, I would accept Nikki Haley. I would accept uh, Glenn Youngkin. I don't know if you know Glenn, but I know yeah, Glenn of course, a long Virginia. Yeah, no, I know Glenn a long time. I, I worked with him when he was at Carlisle. Um, do I agree with everything? No, I don't agree with everything. But is he a normal guy? Does he believe in the democracy? Does he believe in the Constitution? He does. Okay. And he's got good values. And I'm always reminded of what Ed Koch once said. You know, Ed Koch once said, he's given a speech. He said, if you agree with nine <clears throat> out of the 12 things that I'm saying, if you agree with nine out of the 12 things that I'm saying, you should vote for me. If you agree with 12 out of the 12 things I'm saying, you need a psychiatrist. Okay, And that was basically the point that we are different. No person is going to be in the perfect fingerprint with you. Right. You know. So to your talking point or to your answer, about the left, you particularly probably addressing the squad. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not a progressive. I'm a liberal, but I'm not a progressive. It goes too far. Some the Bernie Sanders stuff, if, if I hear Bernie say one more time, the top 1% drives me fucking nuts. Now I had somebody try to tell me that he's not saying that the top 1% should pay for everybody else, but that's how it comes across to me. Bernie would have to sit down and not be a curmudgeon that day and explain to me what he really means because I don't, I don't think that's right. I think you pay your fair share but I don't think the top 1% is responsible for the rest of the people in the country. I just don't agree with that logic. I don't. And, you know, I'm, I'm told I can't be, I can't be liberal on social issues, which I am. And I can't, and, but I'm more centered and conservative on spending issues. We are spending on both sides is completely out of control in this country. I don't understand why we, we don't put more emphasis on cutting, on cutting things where we can cut them. But what I want to ask you is when you have somebody OK, you and I try to find a tweet. I couldn't find it. I, I'm going to be full disclosure. You did something with AOC. And I remember this like two years ago. You know, I remember everything. Two years ago, you said, I'm, I know you'd probably be surprised, but I did something. What, what was it you did? It was something positive with AOC. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, no, we were we, we worked on. Uh, I mean, I don't remember the exact program. So okay. I don't want to say it because then, it'll you know. Right. But we worked on something together. And it was uh, it was great. You know, it was it was like an inner city uh, youth program. Right. I don't know her. I frankly didn't meet her during the thing, but okay. I contributed money to it and so forth. But I respect her. OK, because that woman is an incredibly hard worker. You, you don't have to like her policies. Yeah. You don't have to like who you think she is or what she represents. But she's an incredibly hard worker. OK. And and she's got panache. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, when she goes on Twitter to play a video game, she's getting more viewers than Ron DeSantis when he's (laughs) announcing a presidential candidacy. Okay, so now I don't agree with her on everything. And I and I and I but here's the thing. I want to debate AOC in the intellectual marketplace, the free idea marketplace. And so if she beats me, meaning she's got more of people in the country that side with her, then we go with her policies. But if I beat her, then we should go with my policies. Do you see, you see, you see what I'm saying? I, understand what you're I don't saying. want to attack her personally. I don't want to call her names or insult her. Yeah, you don't even explain that because I'm about to, I'm about to, I don't have to read yeah. the tweet, but I'm going to paraphrase your tweet. Yeah. And you said it back to Trump when his sorry ass was still on Twitter. So people that, like I said, are wa- will watch this show and say, Anthony this and Anthony that, you put on people, including me, what's what's factual. And of course, there's going to be opinions, but don't make up shit. And I won't let anybody attack you in this area because I know what you are well, and I, I know what you're not. And you know the same with me, okay? You took up for her on Twitter when his sorry ass was calling her names and you said she graduated. And I found a tweet. I didn't, I don't, mm-hmm. I didn't print out. She has this education. She has that education and these tropes. I think that's the word you use to Trump and you tagged him too. Yeah. So I know okay. his ass saw it. Yeah, you of said course. these tropes that, and it was probably maybe 2020 or maybe 19. It was 2019. 19. It, was, it was August 2019. of 2019. And you went after him. Yeah. He was going after again. The squad, I don't have yeah. to agree. I don't have to agree with those women. Right. After the four women of the squad. Right. They have to go back to the countries that they originally came right. from. Right. And three of them were born here in the United States. Yep. The Army. And then, you know, the one woman I think immigrated from uh, Africa. One of the about Africans. Omar? Yes. I think, I think, I think that's who it is. And so whether you like the people or don't like the people, they're Americans. And they said it about my grandmother. They told my grandmother to go back to the country she originally came from. And she was very hurt by that. It's very nativistic. It's very racist. And it's frankly anti-American. And mm-hmm. it shouldn't be coming from the American president. And I, I said it. I did agree. I disagree with him. He went after me, which is what he does. Mm-hmm. I went back at him. I think I called him like the fattest president since William Howard Taft because he hates being so fat. He flipped. You know, and then he like starts trolling me like the guy can't even troll anymore. He doesn't even have like a good fastball, you know. Which I don't understand why all these people are so afraid of him. I'm not afraid of him. Well, you're not, but Kevin McCarthy is. uh, Well, well, Kevin's a union. They've they've been told by their consultants. They've been told by their talking heads that you have to get to the right of Trump. So let me ask you this. The worst of your party with the Bobarts and the Greens and the Matt Gates and the Paul Gossers, I feel that the the far, far left, and some of them are too far, like the fund the police, that crazy shit. It's not even a comparison. Don't get me wrong. I got issues with them too, with some of the things that Democrats do. I do. But they're not, to me, destroying democracy like a Marjorie. Th- Marjorie Taylor Greene, she doesn't stop. It's in. It's every single day. This woman is insane. They hit the culture, though. You see, the problem is the re- the Republicans hit the democracy and the institution of America. So, if you're asking me, are they more dangerous than the Democrats? They are. Yes, that's why I would go with Joe Biden over Donald Trump. But the Democrats, if we're being brutally honest, okay, they go after the culture. You know, they say shit about the country I don't like. The country sucks. It's a racist country. We need this. 1619. It is a racist yeah. country. What country isn't racist? Tell me the country. But, but that but that doesn't mean that it's Tell not racist. It's not racist. But, no, but, but see, that Tell goes back to... It's, but, a, it's a country in progress. It's definitely a racist country. Discriminated against Italians. Of course it did. We're, 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 the, the human being is living in a 100,000-year-old piece of machinery, hasn't had a software upgrade. Your phone went from iPhone 1 to 14 in 15 years, but not you. You've had no upgrade, and so you think like a caveman. And it gets very tribal, and it gets very derogatory, and it gets very racially charged. Okay, but we're way better than we were 50 years ago, and we're way better than I, we I don't. I can't years. agree with you there. I, I, where we're way better, where we're way better, yeah. we were making strides until Trump. Trump did not, I say this all the time, he did not start racism in this country. But he enabled these people 
to be really who they were. They saw him as as the vessel. No, me, we're not right now. Let me give you another great can, book, okay? Jonathan Icke, who's a sports writer, he wrote about Jackie Robinson and Muhammad okay. Ali. He just published a book on the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm about 70% through the book, Brad. It's an unbelievable book because it takes you back to his life and the movement from Plessy versus Ferguson, which was the separate but equal Supreme Court case, right. to Brown versus Board of Education, which was we have to integrate these schools and make the schools more fair. And it was an admission by the court that they got it wrong with Plessy versus Ferguson. And the uproar in the South and the racism, okay, and the eventual passing of the Civil Rights Act in 1965, all of these things that did make the country better. Now, again, is it? Yes, we it, made strides. It, yes, we yeah. have. I, I will but, never deny it. But you're not going to. You're not going to end racism. Just you're not, never going to end racism. You'll yeah. never end it. But, but when what you, you have, then do is flatten the society. You have to create more opportunity. But 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 Anthony, but fairer I, I, I outcomes. Yes, more equal opportunity for people. True. I don't like equal outcomes, Brad. But I'm all about equal opportunity. Right. But here's the thing. No, you're you're never going to this country. That's why I hate that slogan. Make America great again. Who was it ever great for? You could talk about the Italians. You could talk about women across the board. Forget colors. They couldn't vote until when. I hate the slogan because it's Trump's slogan. It used to be Reagan's slogan. I know it was. I know it was. But even, but I, even I with Reagan's slogan. I hate the slogan. It's Trump's slogan. But, but the, but the thing is, Trump is a fucking racist. Period. There's but, no denying. Here, wait, wait, hold on. He was yeah. great for my grandparents, even though they were discriminated against. They love, love, love this country. They love, love, love this so country. So did mine. You know, they, you know, my my uncles fought in the Second World War. They love, love, love this fun country. You know what I mean? Right. And there's nothing the matter with loving this country. I love this country too, but I don't like a lot of shit that goes on. They put a man in the White House that they want to put back again that just got found liable for sexual assault. They laughed at it. They fucking laughed at that shit. His wife said it was boy talk, boy talk. What is, what's the line you always use? The only one that hates them more uh, uh, than Melania is your wife, is, is Deidre, or whatever you say, or, or vice, vice versa. Yeah, no, I said that. I said my wife hates him almost as much as Melania hates As Melania. Him. But, I mean, it, it, does, it doesn't stop, Anthony. It doesn't stop. And it, it's, we're never not going to be without racism. But when you put a man up from the bully pulpit, who says the things they say quietly out loud and still does. And I don't understand, honestly, how the Byron Donalds and the Tim Scotts, Tim Scott is, is Donald Trump. He wants to do all of his policies, but he won't call them out. Ron DeSantis is a punk. He wants to do all of this stuff, but he won't call them out. Now he's taking little shots at him here and there. But okay, you talked about Vice President Harris. That was a talking point. You got mm -hmm. ahead of me on that one. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that. I want to go back to that. Yeah, go ahead. So you tweet, like you said, you tweeted it out. And that was uh, that particular night I got inundated with, what, what's up with you? I said, he's allowed to say what he wants to say. Ask him. They was asking me. I said, ask him what it, what is. <laughs> That's because you don't respond on Twitter. That's why they want to ask me to right. ask you. But you had said, um, on, on May 12, 2023, you said, let's state the obvious. And of course, it will piss everyone off. Joe Biden needs to replace Vice President Harris on a ticket, as you said earlier. FDR replaced the VP a few times. Let's do this. And you threw out Lloyd Austin. Well, I, of everybody you could say, I didn't really think he was a great choice, in my opinion, because okay. I think he's a good man. It was a good general, but he got zero charisma. And I don't understand, like, why he doesn't speak out about the shit that Michael Flynn is doing, because I really think Michael Flynn should be called back to active duty. And I believe, I believe, not 100%, that the sec that probably has authority to do it. I know Trump pardoned him. But all of this stuff that he's doing, to me, is treason against the country. It's, it's complete lies and Christian nationalism, whatever that shit's called. I'm probably not as close to that. I was using Lloyd as an example because right. I don't like him. I, I just think she's not doing the job. Well, I will say this. The result of which you got to... You got to you gotta move on. It's not going to happen. He already, he already said it. But I will say this in fairness, full disclosure. I actually want her to be the attorney general when he when when they were looking for the attorney general. But he he, pay, he had a list of women 
and he put him out there. Okay. Look, I must, you know, how about getting her on the Supreme Court? That's a great gig for her. Supreme Court. Basketball question. Was it on the paper? Term limits? I'm for them. That's a good question. Good question. Okay, so I, I'm not going to answer the question. You're going to like my answer. because So I'm not for term limits, but I am for ending gerrymandering. Okay. Okay, but you know, and you do talk about that a lot. And so let, me, let me explain why. Because I don't want to disrupt what's worked. But what happened was we created this tyranny of the minority. The Republicans subverted the system. The Democrats do it too. But the Republicans, uh, that's what I was going to say. The Republicans are better at it. Yeah, better at it. Yeah. The Republicans have twenty nine percent of the voter registration, but they control the House. Yeah. Yeah. They did that through gerrymandering. Okay, and they they got a little bit of that system going on with the, the Senate because look at Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota; those are six senators there. Mm -hmm. That liquidates the blue states of California and New York. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so to me, you know, we got to end the gerrymandering. You end the gerrymandering, you'll end the extremism. You end the extremism, we'll get the country back to normal because all these things. I, but are, you, but you know what? I partially agree with you. Marketing, but I partially agree with marketing, you. Uh, strategies you know but i partially agree with you on that i i do agree about getting the country back but the problem is republican republicans are going to say there's no way we're going to be able to win because there's more of us not you but more of, of on the blue side that they're going to vote and, and we don't have a shot but my answer to that honestly my answer to that is this and maybe it's pollyanna but i'm still going to say it i felt that if the republicans would have dumped Trump's ass and said, we made the biggest mistake we ever made, become in inclusive, not fucking exclusive, yeah. still have your conservative values, like you could be pro-life, but with exceptions, not no exceptions to the rule, and have the audacity to say, it, Christy Nome, that a 10-year-old girl being raped and having a baby is a blessing. I said, that's fucking bullshit. That's sick. And she did say it. If the Republicans would have done that, they might have kicked the Democrats' butts because there's a lot of Democrats out there that are tired over the years of promises made and promises not kept. And that's the truth. You know, the Democrats don't always like me to say that, but it's the truth. And I agree with you, Anthony. There needs to be two parties. One party, actually, I wish there was more viable than two-party system, but there's not. We have a two-party system, but one, I guess, needs to fully implode because they just they went off the rails. But I want to ask you this, talking point. Republican presidential nominees, President Biden, RFK Jr. <clears throat> Everyone knows, and if you don't know, Anthony worked his ass off. He was on my show in 2020. Don't rewrite history because I hate when people do that. He busted his ass and he helped in a big way to get President Biden as a still Republican. He's still a Republican. He's probably the only Republican that I'll talk to. But to get him elected, to get President Biden elected. Now, yeah, I worked hard on that campaign. I know you did. Forced him, raised money. Right. You did a lot of media advocacy for him. Right. Now, I know you'll never back Trump. And I know from COVID, you hate it. You, you can't, I don't say hate it, but you hate the way DeSantis handled things. I did see you liked RFJK Jr., but I think it has something to do with Bitcoin. Of course, I got hit up about that. What is Anthony doing? I said, ask Anthony what he's doing. Don't ask no, me. No, but this is the thing I don't like because I know I like that one position of his. I'm not going to vote for RFK Jr. I'm just saying that. But people is, run with this shit. You know that. And that, but that's it's crazy. We have to end that. I know. We, we we can't have this binary thing. There's there's things about a Republican strategy and a Republican po uh, policy that work. We should use them. There's things about a Democratic strategy or a Democratic policy that work. We should use them. Right now, we're like hard left, hard right. Hard left, hard right. And if anybody says one nice thing about the other person, well, that's it. We have to figure out a way to cancel that person. I don't want to be hard left or hard right. I want to be right or wrong. What's right or wrong for the country, not left or right. And so RFK Jr. has the best, in my opinion, ideas as a presidential candidate related to digital assets. He has the best ideas. But he's and a fucking quack. He could be a quack, but on that one thing, he's I good. Want both, I want both of those candidates to adopt it. 
Well, you remember this. That's what I want. I, 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 I think we're going to fall behind from a human capital perspective and a right. capital capital perspective. And so I want that. I want that. Okay. And I, it's not my wheelhouse, so I can't. I have to. I, have, I, I concede to you that because I don't know enough about it. I just don't like the conspiracy. I don't like the, the conspiracy crap. That's what I can't stand. I'm with you on that. The, the deep state and all that that bullshit. Yeah, and and know. he's friends with your ex buddy. I know he's not your buddy, Steve Bannon and Roger Stone. I, well, they're they're propping him up because they think he's going to hurt the Democrats. I mean, yeah, I course. got all that. Of it? course, I like the Bitcoin position. Okay, so right. my question it's to you is: still being a Republican, yeah, are you riding with Biden, or is there somebody to come along? Well, if during the prime off. during the primaries, I'm going to support Governor Christie okay. because I think he is the beast from the east that can take Trump lights out. Okay, and then let's see what happens after that. But I am going to support Governor Christie. I like him, and he knows that Trump is a systemic danger. But he also kissed his ass, Anthony, for far too long. And let's be honest. He did. Let's be honest. I can't. I don't him. know if he knew about the bridge thing or not. I have my own personal opinions. But that doesn't matter. But what oh, I do know, him. what I do know is that he jailed Jared Kushner's father when I think he was attorney. I think he was attorney general in New Jersey. He yeah, put his. He why did why did attorney. Christie, as smart as Christie is, and I'm not saying he's a dumb man. Trump is a dumb man to me. Christie's not a dumb man. But why would he think that Trump would ever be with him after he put Jared? Not that he has loyalty to Jared because he's got loyalty to nobody. But why would Christie think he would Trump would keep him? Or use him in any capacity other than to just use him, good and question. then threw him on, threw him under the bus. It's a good question. Listen, these are flawed people, man. Never going to find a perfect candidate. Never going to find the perfect people. But I want to get rid of Trump. Yes, and I'm willing to put capital behind Governor Christie to knock Trump off the stage. And I'll just say this to you: you can like it or dislike it. If you told me tonight the country has a choice between Joe Biden and Mitt Romney, I'm going back to work. OK, because we're going to be fine. But if you tell me tonight the choices between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, I'll be on TV every night trying to help Joe Biden. And I and no, I saying? agree with you. But, but I'm just telling you, if Chris Christie got the nomination, you can like or dislike Chris Christie. But it's better for the country because let me give you the bad news. It's a 50 50 coin toss on these elections. You know, Trump gets the nomination, Brad. He's got a 40 to 60 percent chance to become the president. I know. So let's work towards him not getting the nomination. Okay. Joe Biden wins a second term. God bless him. Mazel tov. I would, but I want him to stay alive. I want him to go from 82 to 86. OK, you know, God bless him. Wish him a long, healthy life. OK, but we can have Donald Trump be the president. I, I agree. Have to, yeah. If you're me as an entrepreneur, you have to defend you have to invest in somebody that you think can knock off trump no matter what the person's flaws are and no matter anything that you say to me that will identify issues or inconsistencies doesn't matter can this guy potentially knock off donald trump yes therefore i'm going to put some money on that and i'm going to put some okay, chips all right i understand i understand the angle I, mean, I got a final talking point but i want to ask you i want to piggyback on what you said about digital currency mm -hmm. how come people like you you got a lot of pull and you know a lot of people that have a lot of pull in what you do. How come you can't get, or have you had, or have you been offered, or have you tried to get a meeting with the White House to talk about these things? I haven't tried. And the reason I haven't tried is that I don't want to put myself in a position of lobbying the Joe Biden White House or Republican White House because I'm an entrepreneur. And I think the lobbying game, not to be overly cynical about it, is like, you know, I don't want to be accused of lobbying the White House and having it be perceived as being in my self-interest. If I were ever, I'm not saying I'm ever going to do this. But, but you do, to, but you do credit like Ted Cruz did something, which I can't stand him, but he did do something good for your industry, right? He did. And so therefore I said, this imbecile, a broken clock is right twice. Right. And so that's my point. That's the RFK thing and the Ted Cruz thing. Right. And and so what I would say is I would love them to listen to me or love them to listen to a group of people that are in the industry like me. But I don't want to put myself out there as a lobbyist 
or an influencer because if I ever, and I'm not saying I'm going to do this, but if I ever run for office, I don't want to be accused of doing it for self-interested reasons or, oh, I went to the White House for, quote unquote, I own a lot of Bitcoin. So I went to the White House and said, you got to you know legalize the Bitcoin cash ETF. I don't want to do that. I want to sure. I want to be in a lane where I can give you my opinion. You can like my opinion or just like it. But it's my heartfelt, sincere opinion, not related to my money, not related to my bank account. You follow what I'm saying? It's just yes. related to what I think is the right or wrong thing to do for the American people. Okay. Before we get to the final target point, you made me think of somebody else when you said run for office, not comparing you to them. You know, I respect you too much to compare, but it's ridiculous. Why is a piece of shit like Santos? I know why, because Kevin wants to vote. Right. But it, but you and I, one thing, no matter no what now. we agree on, what we don't, we agree on this. Country over party. It just it makes him look bad. Why is Santos there, Anthony? Even Republicans don't want him there. Why? I, I had a guy on my staff who was a brilliant guy. And I am a very strict person when it comes to our compliance protocols. And I'm like, you have to follow the compliance protocol. My father was an honest guy. We're never doing something at Skybridge that would dishonor my father. To follow the compliance protocol. Okay. The guy wildly breached the protocol. No client got hurt, uh, but it was a wild operational transgression and it was done with malice of forethought. Terrific salesperson, very, very good moneymaker for the firm and a valuable asset to the firm. You're fired. Get your fucking bag and get out the front door. Okay? And that's what Kevin McCarthy needed to do to George Santos because you cannot tolerate that. And the minute that you do tolerate something like that, no good. No good. Okay. Final talking point. Yep. Elon Musk. Yep. Okay. So, like right. You but I want to I want to see. Do you remember what I told you? The day he bought Twitter on April 24, 2022. What did I tell you? Privately. More or less that he sucks and he was going to blow it up and he was going to turn into a right wing radical cesspool. Okay. And, and what then, did you and what did you tell me? So give him a chance. You sure did. Right. Okay. You gave him a chance. Now what? What did he prove? Well, I wait, think... wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Let me let me add let me add put a little meat on the bone. Okay. I know you were on a conference call with him. And he was going to fit, you were shadow, your shadow band. You have to be, because you sat at a million followers forever. It's a right. huge number. Yeah. Now, in the last yeah. couple of days, you dropped like a couple hundred thousand. I don't understand that. Okay. Not a couple hundred thousand. No, I'm dropping about a thousand a day. Okay. I, I don't know why. Right. I have very but little. My point, but my point is, you should have under. Up. I'm under a million now. I have no engagement on Twitter. So. And you have no engagement. But when I first met no. you, but Anthony, when I first met you a couple of years back, you had much better engagement i had so robust you, engagement i don't have any engagement now if i put out a tweet i don't think anybody sees it do you see my oh well, no 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 they see it the assholes that attack you about your height and everything else they see you. they okay, never yeah. stop okay but, yeah, but, but there's not there's not really that much uh activity on my twitter account right but here's but here's the thing elon could have come in there i wouldn't care if he made 80 billion dollars i don't care if he made 100 billion off his 44 billion yeah, he had the opportunity, and he didn't have to be far left, and he didn't have to be far right. Yeah. But when that son of a bitch put Donald Trump back on, that was—I don't want to hear about no Second Amendment speech. He used Twitter to cause an insurrection. When he put mm -hmm. when he put Nick Fuentes, a a piece of Ali Alexander, these people that are horrible, that are blocked from YouTube, even they're so bad, they're so bad for the country. And I know free speech is a tricky thing, but Trump had no business being back on there to do what he did. And he used it to cause, it helped use it to cause an insurrection. You listen to him on a thing, you say, hey, Brad, he's, he's, he's going to probably fix my thing. He didn't fix it. So now where do you stand with Elon Musk? And don't be scared to say where you stand no, with No, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not a friend. I'm fucking a real man. When after the president, I said, I'm not afraid. Say, I know. I'm busting your balls. I, I, I don't know why I'm shadow banned on Twitter. No one would give me an answer. I asked Elon's staff. They told me I wasn't shadow banned. If you go in the shadow ban filter, it says I'm not shadow banned. Uh, I I also did a you know a, a check like of the 
followers that I have to see maybe there were robots that attached themselves to the account or something like that. They seem to be legit and real followers. So I don't know. I don't know why there's no engagement, but somebody that has a million followers or 999,000 followers should have way more engagement than what I have. Now, when uh, Prime Minister Trust left the office after 30 days, and I said she lasted 4.1 Scaramucci's or whatever it was, 42 days, I got a lot of engagement. You know, I got, you know, over a million people did see that. I probably got 400,000 likes. So maybe I just have to hammer the politics day and night uh, to get the engagement. I don't know, but I'm not. Okay, but the I'm question just, is Musk. Where do you stand on Musk? I was saying. So, so my thing with Elon Musk is I think he needs more time. And I think he's done some good things with Twitter spaces. I think he's broadened the platform. And I think he's opened people's eyes to a lot of different things. I He's taken some people off the platform like Kanye West, et cetera. Um, and so I think he just needs more time. I know you're negative on him. He's I'm a less, petulant child. He's a right, petulant right, child. I'm, I'm less negative on him. He, he does do some funny things. Funny I is one thing. As a guy that has a sense of humor. You see as a guy that has a petulant childishness. But I'm a little bit of a petulant child. Okay, so I... I, I Yeah, but I, smelling, I, your, I Anthony, smelling, smelling your stuff. own farts, that's petulant child. What he's that's doing to the country with some of his shit, these people, yeah. these these people that he's putting on there, the stuff that he that he's retweeting, he re Anthony, Paul Pelosi was attacked. It wasn't a gay tryst. That motherfucker retweeted that shit to his hundred and thirty million he followers. Deleted he deleted it. He deleted it. He deleted it, but he retweeted it, and he yeah. knew it was bullshit. He knew it. Anthony Trump said. Head. Trump said out of his own bloated mouth. The window was broken. The glass was broken from the inside. It okay. was not. It was okay, not. Brett. Okay, Brett, Brett. Somebody like Elon Musk doesn't go from South Africa to the richest person, knowable richest person, well, not royal families, creating a commercial space business in the United States. A, a lot of that stuff he didn't create. He took over it. He didn't, he didn't start he somebody's paid, But he still, you can't take away the genius you of found his anthony you founded skybridge he didn't found a lot found a lot of these things i and understand what you're saying him. but he's made a hell of a lot more money than me i can tell you that yeah he has made but that does that but that doesn't, doesn't so give him a, a license that doesn't give him a license to act like an asshole but i do think he's an innovator and i would give him more time <laughs> okay we're gonna have to agree to disagree <laughs> i don't know how much how much more time he needs you know, look, he took away the verification check and then he gifted some checks to people. Now you got to buy the check. I mean, it's it's, it's ridiculous. I don't understand him. I don't understand. I think he could have done so much good. And again, he I think he's far right. I wouldn't want him to be far left. Just be be centered. He's, to me, he's not centered. He's not centered. He's not. And he and he acts like he acts like a freaking child. He really does. You, you know, and and being being the the uh the Tom Hanks character in Big was cute. When you have that much power like he does, it's not cute. It's not the it's not the same thing to me. But mm -hmm. all right. All right final man. final thing. Yeah. Today is what? June second. Mm -hmm. What is today's message of hope? Or whatever when it comes to humanity? Well, well, I think there's a lot of hope. I mean, we just we we're just talking about that, right? Like, so you have this uh 100,000 year old piece of machinery that you're living inside of that has all of these primordial instincts. And so we get trained to think of the world linearly. So if things are not going well, we're like, okay, well, it's always going to not go well. Or we think like that, it's a survival mechanism, but the world happens exponentially, Brad. So uh, Thomas Malthus once said in the 1840s that we would starve. We wouldn't have enough capability on the planet to produce the food necessary for the explosion in population. But he missized vertical farming and genetically modified foods and irrigation and better fertilization and all of these different things. He, he totally missized all of it. And a result of which uh, we have more people dying from obesity related illnesses than we do from starvation. When I was a kid, they told us we were going to run out of oil. There was a, a comment was called peak oil theory. I was sitting in a classroom at Tufts University. The professor told me, listen, it's 1985. It is 
25 years later, 2010, we're going to run out of oil. It'll be $2,000 a barrel of oil. Never mm -hmm. happened. We developed fracking. We changed the changed the way we look at things. We had the satellites. We identified places in the world where we could get the oil. We have more oil now than we know what to do with. It's probably going to create an environmental crisis, right? So what I would say to people is that don't underestimate the exponential growth of the human race and the ingenuity of the human race. And we're going to solve some problems using immunotherapy and biotechnology. And we're going to solve some problems using robotics or artificial intelligence. And we're going to, before you know it, we're going to look back and say, wow, we had a lot of problems, but we also came up with a lot of really innovative solutions to cure ourselves from these ills. Okay. And I wouldn't bet against that. And I certainly wouldn't have bet against our country. We've gone through bad times and tribalism and splits. We had a civil war 160 years ago uh, and we got through it. And so I, the, my, my message of hope is to apply some historical context, think like a long-term person and recognize that our trend is for success and for exponential opportunity. Well, you know, you sound a little like President Biden talks about it all the time. Yeah. He says that and see, he's a Democrat. So I guess all, all democracy, that, that shows you that a Democrat and a Republican can have some common ground. I love it. I love it. I think it's very well said. It and is. it's always a pleasure to be on with you, man. Thank you for including me tonight. Absolutely, Paisan. You have a good night. Thank you. All right, you too. You're Thank the man. You. Bye. God bless. Really good, Brad, as always. Hey, folks, that's another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show on the Ringside Report Web TV channel with my paisan, Anthony, the Mooch, Scaramucci. You see how we can have a give and take conversation when you have two people that respect each other? I wish that we could have more of that in this country, but Anthony's not a MAGA Republican, so that makes a big difference. With that said, make sure that, again, you hit that button and you subscribe. Leave comments below. I will personally respond to you. And as well, follow me on Twitter at BadBradRSR. Again, it's at BadBradRSR. And remember, folks, every act of kindness is a little love we leave behind. Bad Brad out. Thank you for watching the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Please follow, subscribe, leave comments, forget about it, and move humanity forward.